morning, everyone, and welcome to the second session of the Youth Are Pillars of Society series, Young Elders and Wise Youth, a sustaining momentum through the Commission on the Status of Women by the Baha'i International Community and the Major Group for Children and Youth. My name is Elaine Kunzmana, and I'm joining you from New York City. Thank you very much for joining our event. So before we get started, I would just like to mention a few housekeeping uh, uh, items. This item, this meeting is being recorded. So um, if you just keep that in mind as we go through the, the session. Uh, we do have um, uh, a large room here. So please let us know if you're having any issues with the sound and we'll try to um, uh, fix that. And for those of us who are attending in person, we just encourage you to use your outside voice <laughs> as we are uh, as we are speaking for the chat please feel free to put your name into the chat and the city that you're joining from so we know which parts of the world are, are represented today and when the time comes uh, at the end of uh the, the the question period between the speakers feel free to use the chat uh, to post your questions there but we will also ask you to raise your hand if you would like to speak and ask your questions uh, to the speakers so just a little bit of background information on this series. The series started uh, at the uh, during the ECOSOC Youth Forum, and we will have a total number of uh, four of these sessions until the beginning of HLPF at the beginning of July. And uh, the series are building on the theme of this year's HLPF and ECOSOC Youth Forum, which is building back better from COVID-19 while advancing the full implementation of the 2030 agenda. As I mentioned, there are four of these sessions. They're meant to be intergenerational events uh, with three goals in mind. Firstly, appreciating how far we have come in increasing youth participation within and around the UN. There has been progress that has been made, recognizing that there are gaps that exist, and also creating spaces to brainstorm about the future of youth participation during this decade of action <coughs> toward 2030. So, in light of the sustainable development goals under review this year, which are the equality on education, which is uh, SDG number four, uh, SDG number five on, on gender equality, 14 on life below water, 15 life on land, and 17 on participation for the goals, uh, excuse me, uh, cooperation for the goals. And the theme of the CSW, the Commission on the Status of Women this year, which was on achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls in the context of climate change, environmental and disaster risk reduction policies and programs. Say that fast twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we could not do a series on youth participation without focusing on the role that young people had in contributing to the conversations at the CSW this year, as well as on all the fora that are taking place, the ECOSOC Youth Forum and the HLPF. We know that young people are passionate about their communities and contributing to, to the progress of our society. So we thought that for this second series to focus on those conversations that happened at the Commission of the Women. So we know that many young people were involved in the CSW negotiations, offering language on the agreed conclusions and suggesting ways in which youth can become even more involved in future commissions. So today we have an excellent panel of representatives of the member states of Ireland and Latvia, the UN uh, and civil society, who will have a conversation with us on the role of youth in the CSW and what we learned and what is the pathway forward. Just a note on the intergenerational nature of the series. We know that the scale of the crises facing humanity today call for the world's peoples to devise ways in which to collectively participate. This means youth and older generations, shoulder to shoulder, in creating solutions together. We are all protagonists in this process of trying to figure out how to um, uh, come up with creative solutions. And each age group has its own unique perspective to bring to this, to this issue uh, and to the table. So how are we going to have this conversation? We will have two rounds of questions for the panelists, uh, focusing on the CSW process and the role of youth. That will be about uh, 30 minutes. We will then open the floor for questions from the participants. As I mentioned, you can ask your questions in the chat um, by typing out the questions and we will keep an eye on that and I, I can read out those questions. However, you're also welcome to use the raised hand function on the Zoom and we will call on you uh, to ask this question to the participants. And then I will close the, the conversation at the end of the series and we will try to 
um, keep in mind everybody's time and, and hopefully we'll end uh, by 11 o'clock. As, as the speakers are answering the questions, we will ensure to put their biographical information in the chat so you know who is talking. Um, and with that, we will get started. So the first round of questions is going to be focusing on uh, this, the Commission on the Status of Women. So I will read out three questions and the panelists will be invited to answer the questions in no particular order. Hopefully it will be conversational in style and build up um, on the comments that are made by each of the panelists. So the first question is, how can our understanding of public participation be expanded from one of providing a seat at the table to build the capacity of youth to engage in policy level conversations? The second question, one of the key achievements of the Commission on the Status of Women for this year was a decision to add an interactive youth dialogue to the list of official events. So the question is how will, how will the process for this event evolve and how will it increase um, participation? Third, what are the key successes achieved in advancing the climate justice agenda from a gender perspective during the CSW of this year? Wonderful. So I will now open, uh, welc I welcome the participants to answer these questions. Um, I know that um, a number of, of the panelists, um, specifically uh, Ishan and Ori, um, were interested in talking about um, how we can expand the role of youth from just being present at the table, but to also engage in policy level conversations. So perhaps I will turn it over to Uri, um, <laughs> putting you on the spot. Always ready. <laughs> Only because you're sitting next to me, Uri. <laughs> so it was easy, you're at the corner of my eye. Um, and uh, to get us started, and uh, we will we'll expand it to the rest of the panel. <clears throat> 